All right, we got the Tesis or T Sauce USA 1911 A1 clone, which uh picked this up the other day. My local gun shop was uh, 3.99, 45 ACP. You know, uh, honestly, wasn't sure if I was gonna like it or how much I was gonna like it. But I was uh, pleasantly surprised, out, especially by this case alone. Nice clips, gun locks, nice hard case. Presented very, very well, actually. This is my first 1911 that I've ever owned, ever shot. So, you get a little breakdown. doesn't come with a whole lot. You got spare mag, one mag in the chamber. You got the trigger lock, little lo or unloaded chamber indicator. You have... The little tool for the bushing, which I honestly did not need this, and this is the first 1911 that I've ever taken apart. So unless you really don't have good dexterity, you should be perfectly fine not using this. It comes with a, a cleaning brush tool, which I don't have any um, pad. Well, I do have pads for this, but I don't know where all that stuff is at this point. I just moved everything around. I got a a, a new gun cabinet and I don't know exactly where that's at but it comes with the brush comes with the cleaner if you hold this back there's all the, the user manual and everything and I don't know if you can read that it is a forged 1911 with a forged hammer and slide it's a 70 series standard 1911 magazines so yeah this little tag you know came on it but honestly for four hundred dollars you cannot beat this 1911 so I did take this to the range today actually and with one of these mags I'm not sure which one it was but I did have it ran flawlessly the first time I used it but the the shells the back of the shell kept getting stuck so I would load like one or two and then the whole spring system and everything would get stuck well, I ended up, um, I have a Maglula mag loader, that's what I was using, so at first I thought it was just that, so I stopped using that, and it was still binding up, but, um, I kept messing around with it, you know, kept pushing it down, and I was able to get the rounds loaded in there after that, and then after that I didn't have no problems with it, I shot, uh, 100 rounds all together out of this today, which I know is not really much of a break-in, but full um steel except the grips these are plastic grips which i do want to get some turkish walnut grips for this this is a turkish made gun and turkish made guns are actually known to be rather reliable for the most part does got the traditional um grip safety very nice trigger um the beaver tail is a little small so some people get hammer bite me personally I had no problem whatsoever with it, but I do have kind of, you know, skinnier hands. I don't have a lot of skin or anything up there to get bit by the hammer, but I have relatively small hands. I wouldn't say, I'd say medium-sized hands. They're not really big hands, and I grip this perfectly fine. I like to put my finger up here. It's got a perfect little loop for your finger, and it feels really good. And for my first time shooting 45. Like, I was expecting a lot worse, and this uh, safety actually does work rather well. Ooh, it's mag in there, but yeah, it does work rather well. There was one time where I, I did knock it up, and I put it on safety while I was firing, but I adjusted my grip. So I, I tend to do this, and I gotta adjust myself, and I keep my thumbs high forward, and I ended up hitting that. But um, after I adjusted my grip right, I had no problems with it. But show you empty mag. You guys don't scream and yell at me. This empty mag. Oh, <laughs> got to take the safety off first. Duh. Lock this back. Nothing in there. Get the little little pinky test. Nothing in there. No mag. So uh, model 1911A1 service. It is. A clone, not a perfect clone, 
It says um, Knoxville, Tennessee, but this is a Turkish gun. This is an import, the uh, S and D import. It is a Turkish gun. But um, let's talk about the trigger. So for the uh, reset or the take up, it's not not very much take up. It, it it's not really a super light trigger, but it's not a very heavy trigger. Pretty, pretty good. Boom. Reset. Almost immediate. That's very, very good in my opinion. No front serrations. Do have back serrations. They're not super, super, like, pronounced, but they are plenty enough good. Like, you get a good grip. Even, like, my hands are a little oily. I just cleaned one of my other guns, and, uh, it's perfect, you know? Like, it's plenty enough. And, uh, yeah, let's, uh, break this down and give this a small little cleaning. Like I said, I put 100 rounds to it today. Um, first 1911 I've ever owned. Uh, so, yeah, without further ado, let's break it down and get to talking about it a little bit. Alright, so, we're gonna move this out the way. We're gonna need this. Let's grab this, so. If you are unfamiliar... Yes, this is not going to look very good whatsoever, but to disassemble the 1911, there's a little pin right here. Yep. I put my finger in there. Doesn't look safe, no, but not cocked, nothing. There's nothing in here. We showed you no mag, nothing. So I like to do that. Push down on that, and you rotate it towards you, and you want to put your hand over this, because this does fly out sort of. So you could take that out, that's your button. Oh. Then you have your spring. So this is the part that when I first did it, it's a little tricky. So we're going to push this, but we have to cock this back first. So, oh, actually put it right in the perfect spot. So there's the slide lock and there's a little tiny divot right there. You want to get your slide lock right at that divot. I'm not 100% sure if you can see that. Yeah, you should be able to. And then you press this in. Pops that out. Pull that whole assembly out. Set that to the side. Now, before you can take this barrel out, you have to spin this all the way to the other side. back a little bit and then it should oh once it slid over to this side there's a little notch right there and that should just pull right out you just pull it off and that don't look too shabby not too bad for a hundred rounds so this piece right here this is part of your spring mechanism and we can just push this, there's a little loop, so I'll push that down, and you can just slide your barrel right out. And I actually uh, did <laughs> over grease this just a tiny bit. The first couple shots was spitting a little bit of grease out the back, but like I said, this is my first 1911, you know, I don't know if they like to be dry or wet, and uh, I was just trying to hurry up and get to the range, so I just threw some oil in there real quick, and called it a day there's a little bit of wear right there I don't know if you can see that uh, some on that side too so it's it's definitely a tight fit it needs to wear down properly to be 100 percent which they say 200 to 300 rounds usually is the the break-in for 1911 or so I've heard honestly this does not look very dirty at all for a hundred rounds and I know some people are like oh a hundred rounds I shoot that every week well I have kids and that shit is expensive so I went with budget pistols oh sorry about that right, gonna spray this down just a a little bit let it sit 
and I'm using uh, REM oil. I use this to clean and lubricate. I've used it for years. I use it in my AR-15, all the pistols that I own. Um, I've never, never had a problem. Works really good as cleaner and lube. So we're gonna. I like to put my finger, preferably my pinky, on the one side, and then spray it a little bit down in there. I just do that so it doesn't immediately come out. And then we put it back the other way. Oh, yep, it's dripping. That's good. That's what it's supposed to do. That's how you know you got all the way through. So, we're going to let that sit there and soak for just a minute. These things right here, they don't really need a whole lot like the the barrel bushing. Sorry, I had a brain fart. It doesn't really need a whole lot of cleaning to my understanding from what I've seen and what I understand of how it to work. Just needs a little little wipe off. Does need to be pristine perfect. Also, give that a little wipe off. Which is for the this is the second time um I've took apart this nineteen eleven and honestly like it's relatively easy there's not a whole lot like when I first like seen the videos and shit mm, excuse me um, when I first seen the videos and shit I was like damn that's kinda complicated cause I'm used to like um like the Glock style or like the Smith & Wesson equalizer I'm not sure what else breaks down like that but uh like the BGR9 that breaks down like that. Um, I'm used to stuff like that. I've never had to disassemble a gun quite like this. So this is this is a little new to me. I know there's definitely some things I'm probably doing wrong, but I'm learning. My first 1911. I mean, it was in two world wars, and it was perfect enough for that. So why not why not be good enough for me? Which, in my opinion, this is a great gun for the money. I did have one malfunction other than the magazine, but I think that was just because I had a little sissy grip on it and um, it didn't fully seat the next round. It ejected the spent round, but it didn't fully seat on the next round. If I would have just gave it a little tap, it would have fully seated, but I, you know, ejected, racked it to see what it was just because I didn't know if it was a spent shell. And I put it in there, racked it, shot perfectly fine. So that m actually might have been more a magazine problem. Because I said the magazine um, spring was getting stuck and it was binding up. So it might have just been partly the magazine. Not 100% sure. And I did, um seen a lot of people say like um, oil, the mags and stuff. The one mag was well decently oiled the other one I did throw some oil on it sorry before I left to the rain so they weren't bare dry or anything and I'd say that's uh that's probably pretty good and all I was shooting was a uh, regular target ball ammo nothing fancy or anything I was just trying to break it in but uh I do plan on maybe carrying this sometimes. Sorry. It's a really fun gun. Honestly, I was expecting a lot more kick than what it actually has. And once I started shooting, I'm like, you know what? This ain't so bad. Like, I understand a little bit why now some people are like diehard 1911s. And the sights are not the best. The fronts are really low and it's black on black. I think I'm going to put a little bit of white on that, make it a little easier to line up the sights. But other than that, like, pretty much everything they did, in my opinion, was uh, pretty good. That's a nice brush, too. Give it a couple of both ways. Like I said, I didn't put too many rounds in here, so pretty darn clean still. Yeah, but for the 399, I paid for it. 
I think it MSRP is for like 419 and I believe it's the the US army version I believe not 100% sure I think so doesn't say it on the box I don't really remember to be honest so make sure we get all that stuff cleaned up or most of the stuff out actually because you ain't gonna get all of it uh, that's pretty good so we going key points anywhere you see where hit it with a little oil. yeah that's probably good enough Just rub that in a little bit try to get some in these It's a little, a little much. We don't let that drip out. Eh, that's probably good. Maybe put a little too much, but oh well. I'm gonna give a little. A little spritz back there to the hammer. You want that nice and uh, lubricated. Get a little, since this is moving, I like to get the barrel a little, a little spritz. All these parts are constantly moving. Get that nice and cleaned up. Wear right there. Well, I got enough on my hands to get that. Same with this, give that a little, little oil on the inside and outside, because it's what your barrel rides in. This as well, this moves on your barrel, a little, give that a little spritz. Alright, now for reassembly. Now, this is the part that I had a little trouble with at the beginning first time I did it so you gotta put that little notch up right there boom you want it all the way back fully seated put this up and that goes right there you can take your spring Put it in there. Just center it a little bit, makes it a little easier. So now that you got that, oh, make sure the barrel's all the way in there. Take and line them up. Oh, can't forget about that. That needs to be like that. Line them up. Oh, that was a little, a little far. And. Yep, I was afraid of that. Yep, this piece isn't in the right spot. You will not be able to get the uh Just knocked it. Ah. That pin don't never want to stay. I should have started doing it like this from the beginning and I don't know if you can see that let's see daylight all the way through boom so 
I'm going to take this, slide it in that hole, not all the way. Remember that bump? You're going to pull that bump, tiny little bump, right back here. Gently push this down in there. Seat it all the way. So now you can push that up. I like to put the safety on so the barrel doesn't move. So now that's locked. Everything's good on that. So take your bushing. Put it in that way. We actually take that out for a second because we need to spin the bushing all the way towards us. Put that in there. Now this is, this is the part where it's a little tricky. You take that, slip it over. Keep your hand over this because it will shoot out. And you slip that over. Once you got it over there a little bit like that, boom, you readjust your grip, push it down, and then center it. After that, I like to wipe it down a little bit. Definitely gets a little greasy. Grease ain't gonna hurt the gun whatsoever. Might actually even help it a little bit. So, cycle. Oh, take it off safety first. Cycle. Then you wanna trigger. Cycle while holding the trigger still. Listen for the reset. Reset. Hammer drop. So now, again, reset. You wanna take your finger off of that no bang grab it boom reset and then there you go it's all the way back together and it's actually really smooth um chamber and rounds it's not bad at all not bad at all pretty pretty clean i didn't do a super deep deep job but feed ramp and everything is quite a bit cleaner all in all we go I'm gonna hit this with a little a little extra right there and one thing I've always heard about 1911s which I don't like doing this on any gun never drop your slide on an empty chamber boom that's all you gotta do but yeah the thesis, or whatever, however you say it, I think it's thesis. Uh, 1911 A1 clone. And if you look at this right here, the the feed ramp is dropped down a little bit from the originals, it's supposed to help with ejecting. But yeah, 45 ACP, 1911 A1 clone. Not bad, not bad at all. For four hundred dollars, go and get it. I do have a little bit of range video that I'm gonna put at the end, but uh, eight round mags, two eight round mags. And from what I hear, um, most 1911 mags do cycle in this. I've not tried any other ones, but the ones that came with it. But, um, from my research, most 1911 mags do cycle with it. And, give another look at the box. It does have locks. But, I mean, for $400, very, very smooth shooting. I'm, I'm a 9 mil guy, and I was expecting it to be so much worse. But, yeah. If you have the option, you have $400. Even if you don't really need it, get it. Everybody needs a 1911 in their collection. And even if you have a really nice 1911 that you hate taking out because you don't like dirty in it, you don't like, you know, you don't want to mess it up, buy this. Beat the shit out of it. It probably will run for a very long time. From what I can tell, everything seems very, very solid on it. Um, very good firearm. I'll put a couple little clips at the end. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. T-Sauce, or T-Sauce, 
1911 A1 US Army. Get it if you can. I paid 3.99 for this and it was a great deal. Didn't know if I was going to like it. Well, turns out I love it. But have a good one. Uh go get yourself one of these. Hurry up before they're gone. Stay here for a minute, okay?